Meanwhile, Chinese mainland investors are breathing a sigh of relief after the government decided to cut down on the number of IPOs this year. And now analysts say the world's top markets could be reaping the benefits. Kathy Yang explains. A hundred companies listing on the mainland this year may mean five times more listings overseas in choice venues such as Hong Kong. There's a backlog of more than 600 companies wanting to list on the mainland. Now that huge logjam is the result of a 14-month ban on IPO listings. But soon after that was lifted, the mainland markets tanked on fears of a share glut from the onrush of listings. That compelled mainland regulators to take a step back and fine-tune the rule. Now, only 100 mainland companies, or one-fifth of the total, will get approval to list on the mainland markets this year. But even that creates another problem, says Francis Lun of GEO Securities. For the 500 companies that are not going to be listed in China this year, they want the money, they need the money. Where will they go? I think chances are many of them will, will come to Hong Kong, Singapore, New York, or London. What China loses is the world's game. Chinese internet companies, though, will be the U.S.'s market's gain, says Lun, as they're likely to choose New York over Hong Kong for their listing, just as Alibaba did. Alibaba earlier this month filed its application for a U.S. listing after protracted negotiations with Hong Kong on contested listing rules. But Hong Kong will still lord over all other listing venues when it comes to mainland property companies wanting to raise money. That's because Hong Kong already boasts of a mature bond market where property companies can sell debt and raise money. Even then, the overall prevailing market sentiment for IPO listings will still be weak and will only begin to pick up in the fourth quarter with the planned link up between Hong Kong and Shanghai, says Ben Kuang of KGI Asia. Shanghai, Hong Kong. Uh, stock connect uh, will, imp will be implemented uh, more or less in October or November and so by that time maybe we'll see more funds coming back to Hong Kong and then the uh, overall market sentiment will uh, become more uh, positive. For now, investors may hear and see more of this as mainland companies that don't make the quota get their fundraising started in alternative venues such as Hong Kong. Kathy Yang, CCTV, Hong Kong.